you've got lots of stuff back there. Fantastic. Well, good. Well, let's actually let's start in standing, you know, and we'll just um, stretch a little bit so that when we go down, we feel nice and limber and loose. And last week we started with a really disciplined kind of, you know, elbow to knee situation. We're going to find a little bit more of a crunch and I think this is going to feel nicer on your shoulders. Okay. So I just like you to find yourself standing and just for a minute, bring your fingertips to your shoulders. And when you do that, if there's any tension or tenderness, I want you to be aware of it. And I know this feels like a simple motion, but it's pretty active with the elbows out wide. And then I just like you to lower down your right arm and bring your left hand on the side of the head and just rock it over feeling a stretch. When you do that, just send the fingers really down to the ground. Like you want to touch the ground with that long, long right arm and let that left arm release the neck and maybe like we do when we're seated and we have that opposite arm captured, maybe you look down and see how it feels in the side of the neck, really reaching that arm down. And you can even gently, really slowly, just look side to side. Yeah, the goal is to sort of feel the hinging back here in the neck. Wonderful. And then we'll look down and let that go. And we'll point now the left fingers really down and let's soften the hand to the side of the head. And we'll just really let it gently rotate down towards your right shoulder. And then once again, maybe look down a little bit. The hand is very soft on the side of the head. The fingers are loose, but reach down with your left arm and explore what's happening in the neck. We tend to carry tension unevenly and especially with the, your shoulder and what's happening, you might feel a real difference from side to side. Does that feel okay? Yeah, it's one of those that's hard to, uh, like my physical therapist told me to be careful with stretching. This, this corridor? Um, I think it was more, I think it's more being careful with stretching my sh shoulders. And I think this is more neck. You but did. I do, yeah. I do a little bit of nervy, nerviness, I think. You do, you feel, do you feel, and it may, what might be happening is it could be traveling down from the neck because it is definitely a neck release, but yeah. it's traveling down from the neck to where it begins on your shoulder. So that's good awareness, you know, just to get a sense of where things begin, you know, and how that might be, you know, manifesting at the beginning for you. So let's let that go. We'll release those arms down. And now when we find the crunch and really important not to pull on the head. Last week we did this really disciplined one. Now I'd like you to round. So we're bringing the knee up toward the opposite elbow, but make it kind of a crunch and meet in the middle. Yeah, and you're welcome to round down and look down and the feet are gonna go wide, but it's with control. And maybe look on the outside of that foot that's gonna land, outside of the foot that's going to land. And so what's happening is we're waking up the torso here. Can you round down a little bit more and tuck your head a little bit more? There you go. Yeah, and so when we go side to side, we feel one side of the body weighted. That's beautiful, Susie, yeah. Yeah, it's almost like you become the thinker for a minute. <laughs> yeah, and then let it go with nice control. Yeah, wonderful, really good control. And maybe now hold a minute and then let it go. Inhale, hold a minute. Nice, exhale, release, two more. Inhale, hold just a moment. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, hold a minute. And just two more, releasing, squeeze and release. And squeeze and release. So we get a sense of what side to side crunches will feel like when we go down. But first, let's heel to the feet together. Let's rotate so we're facing the long edge of the mat. 
and I'd like you to bend in. We're sending the spine long by tucking and we're trying to find our thighs. It doesn't matter if they're totally parallel because the quads are being used here for the ski jumper position. And I just like you to put your fingertips under the shoulders, take an inhale and send the butt up and fold the torso over the bent knees. Please keep them bent, but lift your shoulders up so that they're away from your ears and you're getting a sense of a rounded spine. We're gonna keep that rounding and now we're going down by sending the hips down toward the heels reaching the arms forward, and we're sending the leg on right away. I'd like you to squeeze the right leg in, the left leg goes long, nice and rounded. And then release, opposite leg, and release. So it's a tiny tap, fingertips on the knee, and then shoo, shoo, shoo. Yeah, perfect. And maybe get the spine a little bit rounder. That way, yeah, so now you're activating the lower abdomen. Wonderful. Lengthen, hover, shoo, and lengthen, hover, shoo. And we're gonna go for 10 more times. We go for 10, opposite leg, nine, shoo, eight, shoo. So once again, we've got those quads working, but what we're doing is waking up the lower abdomen. We have five more and also getting a sense of the hip flexors and how the low back supports these movements. And here we do two and one. Good, let's lengthen the legs. We keep the spine nice and rounded, maybe shake the legs out so the quads and ankles release, and then just gently round your spine, hands rest next to the shins and just fold the head. You can bring the hands back so they're under the shoulders so you can get a little more of a rounding of that tortoise spine. Please take the inhale here. And then when you exhale, we'll round down up to a tall spine, nice flat back. Yes, perfect form. Please place the feet on the mat so the knees are bent to the sky. We'll have your ring handy. We're not gonna use it at this very moment. Yeah, but just so it's accessible to you. And we'll reach those arms forward. And once again, we'll keep the feet on the mat as we often do to slowly roll down. We're gonna do it at the count of 10. The first thing is to round the spine and bring the stomach in. And then continue to round down for 10. I recommend looking way down towards your tummy. Yes, there you go for eight, seven, Six, five, four, really good speed, three. And I sense your shoulders, there you go, two. Put the head down, one. I'd like you to reach the arms up all the way overhead so your triceps are around the head. And I'd like you to bring your right knee in toward the chest and send it straight up to the sky. Lengthen the left leg really long, reach for your ring now. And I'd like you to flex your right foot and place it on one of the handles. The other hand has both handles in the ring, okay? I'm gonna show you this on an angle. Bring your left arm out to the side quite a lot. And then let's bring that right leg out to the side just at a tiny little angle. It might be like 20 degrees, okay? Flex your right foot more. And with the ring, we're gonna make circles. We're gonna rotate that leg toward the midline, past the inner thigh, and on the ring and rotate, making big circles in the sky with the right leg. I recommend really pushing that left heel down, push that leg down and make as big a circle as you can. Yeah, let those hip flexors rotate. Yes, really cross the midline and out to the side. Yeah, really big circle. Other way too. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Good, good, good. And you can bend the knee if you like, if that's gonna facilitate making a little bit bigger of a circle. Very good. Now I'd like you to pause with the leg in the sky, really anchor the left heel down, 
Open the leg out to the right as far as you can. Try to keep the left hip on the ground. So the legs are gonna be in a perfect angle. Yeah, that right heel is gonna hover above. Bring awareness to the back of your right thigh. Lengthen the leg and flex the foot a little more. It's a big stretch. Try to keep your left hip on the ground. Wonderful. Take an inhale, gaze to the sky. Bring that leg up, straight up. Back up overhead, pass the handle of the ring to your left hand. Reach the right arm out perpendicular. Reflex the foot, IT band. Really stretch it over across the midline. It's not gonna go far because we're trying to keep the legs straight. Good, now maybe lower that leg a little bit forward. It's a deeper stretch in the IT band. Yeah, away from the fireplace. Yeah, there you go. And it might be nice to even bring your right thumb into your right hip crease and send that thigh down so that the inner thighs come a little closer together and you get a very deep stretch in the right hip, the right IT band. Yeah, yeah, good. Take one more breath here. Good, now slowly release that thumb. The leg will change. Bring it up to the sky. I'd like you to bring your hands outside the ring. The hands are now no longer on the handles. They're outside the ring. And I'd like you to slowly climb up the ring. Lift your head, neck, and shoulders. Climb the hands up the ring, but look towards your leg. Bring that leg towards you if you can. Good, get a nice stretch in the back of the leg, but lift your head, neck, and shoulders up. Maybe the forehead is even near the handle. Yeah, really good. Now pause here, pulse up for six, five. It's the tiniest lift of the upper body, four, three. Try to keep your right leg straight, two, that's excellent. One, pause and slowly slide those handles down the ring. Lower the upper body down and let's bend that right knee out of the ring. Lengthen it nice along and exhale. Bring that left leg up into the ring, the flexed foot inside the handle. Good. We're going to get that series on the other side. Now, as we move through these, Susie, the goal is to keep the upper body on the ground, except when we lift the head, neck, and shoulders, okay? Keep that discipline and the awareness in the lower part of the body. Good, the right hand goes out to the side, perpendicular, left hand on the ring. Flex that foot up and we make big circles. Bring that foot out, rotate that leg around toward the midline. We're trying to keep the hip centered Keep the whole core centered. Think of the core as Oz behind the curtain doing this work. Of course, the leg is moving and that's disciplined. But if you notice that whole left oblique and the whole left side are really leading this, the right side is stabilizing. So they're both working in different ways. Let's pause at the center. Now cross that long left leg over across in reverse of the direction of the leg in the sky. Yeah, other leg, yes, there you go. Mm -hmm. Bring it down and around and then opening to the side, down and around and opening. Try to make the circle as big as you can, but shoulders and torso very contained. That's great. Yes, just do another one. Good, and now with a pause, we're gonna pause and even out the hips particularly. So the pelvis feels stable and then open the left leg out to the side as far as you can, but try to keep the hips even. Nice and even, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, we're going the other way first, Susie. I'm so sorry, yeah over out to the side the other way. Uh, um, open it, let's see, you're on the, oh, and I'm so sorry, I'm seeing black. It's really hard to see me with the color. That's okay, that's okay. Let's try to open out so we're a, we're a nice V. Yeah, we're gonna open out like this first. <laughs> like yeah. This. 
So out to the side of you rather than crossing over the body. Yeah, or that's cool too. That's fine. But when you do that, it might be nice to bring your opposite hand to the ring, I think. I, I think. Oh, I, I see. You've got it. I'm so sorry. I just can't see. see me. I think it's really hard to see me because of what I'm wearing. Yeah, <laughs> no, you're doing it perfectly correctly. Pardon me. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Good, 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 good. And go as far as you can. Keep the hips down. Nice. I know your door might be in the way. Now keep that length and control. Think of that low oblique and bring it right up to the sky. Way up to the sky. Good. Pass it to the other hand now. Yeah. And then same control, same muscle. Open it out. Yeah. Cross, cross, cross. Now send the heel down toward the other heel a little bit and keep crossing the leg over the body. Yeah, it's more of an energetic. So you get to into a different part of the IT band. Ooh. Yeah, heel reaching more toward the chair. Yeah, there you go. Uh huh. Should feel a little different. <laughs> I know it's a lot there. This muscle is tight on everybody. And the lower you reach it toward the chair, the more it's intense. Good, I know. Okay, let's bring it straight back up. Nice, now we'll pause here. Bring that ring, the hands around the ring. So it's not on the handle, but on the side. Slowly crawl up the ring. Lift head, neck and shoulders. Crawl the hands up the side of the ring. Yeah, use the upper core. Good, look toward the leg though, rather than to the sky. Keep using the upper core to go as high as you can. Wonderful, that's it. Now let's pause here. I'd like you to pulse up for six. Really nice. Try not to grip the ring, use the core, soft fingers. Nice, four, that's it, three, perfect. Two, one, same control, lower, six. Five, slide the hands down the ring. Two, and one, lower the head, neck, and shoulders down. Yes, yeah, same control in that upper body. That is so good. Now I'd like you to pause here with that leg in the sky. You've got your arms around the ring. I'd like you to rotate now. Bring that right leg up into the ring too. We're gonna wrap that ring around the ankles so the handles of the ring are outside. We've got the ankles underneath and we're able to press it out. Now place the hands down for support next to your legs and then lower the legs, send those heels toward the chair again. Keep the whole back up that until you feel the most active core you've felt yet today, okay? Now pause there, and once again, we're gonna make circles. So rotate the ring out to the right, down, over to the left and up. Out to the right, down, over to the left and up. We're not going to pause, we're gonna keep this motion going, but really slow. As you make these circles, can you press the legs out? Yes. Yeah. Get the hips involved. Yes. Push it out and rotate it down. That's so good. And if it's nicer with your hands under the butt, that's fantastic. Try to keep pressing that ring out and away as you rotate it down slowly. And go as low as you can, but if you feel the low back lift, I want you to lower the back back down. Really important to use the core not the lowest part of the back. Now let's stop. Now that you're at center, we're gonna go the other way. Yeah, you can just finish that circle, nice. And then we'll just rotate to the left, down and around and up. Yeah, keep pressing the ring away. And if the knees bend, that's completely fine. In fact, a little bit of a knee bend is good because we're not finding a lock of the knee, the core might start shaking and shaking is okay. 
Yeah, that's just letting, you know, it's the body letting you know that it's working hard. I mean, if they start to tremble and be really too intense, of course, back off a little. We're going to do four more in this direction. Yeah, so clearly we're getting all the way into that torso, low, middle, upper. And we're going to keep up that work. I'd like you just to do one more circle. Yeah, major, major containment, Susie. You're doing a great job. Pause here at the top. Now bring the ring, same position, but inside the ankles. So just reach up and slip it in. This is a matter of what, how your legs feel. I like to have the ring pretty close to the ankles, but I have very big calves, so it's uncomfortable to have it any lower. Some like it more toward the calves. We're finding that same containment. I'm going to lower the hands down to the hips, lengthen the heels towards your chair a little bit, so much as they can, you know, keep the back on the mat. Good. Micro bend to the knee is great. Good. And now squeeze the ring and let it go. Squeeze the ring. Use the inner thigh and the low obliques and let it go. Squeeze it again and let it go. The legs are probably shaking. Squeeze it for three and let it go. Squeeze it. Knee bend is totally great. Let it go. Squeeze it and let it go. And now we pulse for 12 really fast. 11, 10, yeah, nine, seven, six, really good. Five, bring awareness to the low stomach. Two and one, excellent. Bring your hands to the ring so the legs have to come closer to you. Bring that ring up over your head and lengthen the legs out long. Bring that ring up between the legs. Lift your head, neck, and shoulders to get it up there between the legs. Yeah, pass it to the legs. Let your arms go around the head and lower down and hover and then bring the ring back up. Reach for the ring, lift your head, neck, and shoulders. Yeah, let the legs go along, bring that ring up overhead, overhead, hover. Perfect, and bring it back up. Yes, fantastic. The legs take the ring, the arms release back, the head, neck, and shoulders lower and hover, and squeeze it up. Reach for the ring, lift up, lift up, yeah! And then lower, 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 hover, yes! Bring it back up. We're doing two more, the legs take it. We lower and hover, 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 yes! And squeeze it up. Just one more full circle, the ring goes up overhead, we hover, and squeeze it up. Lift head, neck, and shoulders, give it to the legs. Good, let's lower it down, lower it down. The head, neck, and shoulders, this time we'll lower. The ring releases, let's just gently push the ring away with the legs and reach arms out in the starfish position, reach legs out in the starfish position. Good, and then when you exhale, feel the whole core soften. Yes, and now just take a natural breath into softness. It's a lot of activation on the core. I just want you to release in the softness here. Excellent. Now let's bring the feet onto the mat again. We're going to get into the hips for a moment, Susie. So the knees are to the sky, the feet are on the mat. We're going to roll up into a seated position. So we do it as we often do. We'll lift the head, neck, and shoulders, the arms up to the sky. Try to keep the feet on the ground and use the exhale to round up. Stay as round as you can for as long as you can. And when we rise, I'd like to you to reach for either your block or something soft. You could use your sweatshirt. You could find a pillow in the room. Anything that just doesn't allow your knees to knock together. Yeah, perfect. In fact, you're using a block, I'm going to use a block too. We're going to place that block between the knees, mm -hmm. just at a nice angle. And then when we squeeze the block and we roll back down, this is going to activate the lower core juice. So we'll look down, we'll slowly roll down, 
Yeah, tuck the chin. Yes, there you go. Good. Tuck the chin even more. Really good. The feet are perfectly on the mat. We roll all the way down. Once you do, I'd like you to place your palms next to your hips and find your shoulder support as we do by lifting up the back and replacing it so you have a little more tricep flush underneath. That way you have a little bit more of a pillow, okay? Drag the heels in towards your butt more. So the knees point straight up to the sky. Yeah, really good. Now squeezing your block, I'd like you to lift the hips two inches, not by lifting the hips, but by pushing the middle back down and letting the butt lift up, okay? Squeeze your prop and continue to do that. Lift a little more hip up. Now lift them all the way up. So you've got major, major discipline in the low tummy. Lift as high as you can, pause here, shift the weight to the left, hover your right foot off the ground one inch. That's all. Nice, squeeze the left buttock, soften that knee into the block on the right side. Hold for five, four, three, two, one, lower the right foot and lift the hips a little higher. Yeah, there you go. We always lose it when it's natural. Weight the right side. Take your inhale when you exhale, lift the left heel up and we hold for five. We're trying to lift the right hip up ever so slightly. It's really more maintenance. And then lower that left foot down, pause, lift the hips higher. We're always going to lose it between sets. Yeah, squeeze the butt a little bit. Yes, good. Weight the left side and lift your right foot up. This time we hold for four, three, two, one. Lower the right foot. Push that right foot down to get a lift of the hips. Weight the right side. Lift the left foot up for four, three, two, one. Lower that left foot. Lift the hips up a little higher. Nice, squeeze the buttocks, shift the weight and lift the right foot off the ground for three, two, one. Lower the right foot, shift the weight, squeeze the buttocks, lift the hips, lift that left foot off the ground for three, two, one. Beautiful, lower down, pause, squeeze your block a little bit more, lift the hips high, bring the low belly button in and yes, shift the weight to the left. Lift the right foot up for two and for one and lower it down. Squeeze the right hip so the butt lifts more. Shift the weight to the right, lift the left foot up for two and for one. Lower that foot down, squeeze your block. We just have one more. Major coccyx curve in the tummy, wonderful adjustment. Lift the right foot up for one, place it down. Squeeze the block gently, shift the weight, lift the left foot up for one, lower it down, beautiful. Squeeze the hips up, squeeze the butt, we hold for 10, squeeze the butt harder, eight, seven, can you lift the hips a little bit higher, four, three, two, one, soften the buttocks first, keep squeezing the ring and slowly place your back on the ground. Oh, I know. Take the block away from your knees and put it up over your head. And I'd like you to find Supta Baddha Konasana. The feet are together. The knees are apart. You'll find that little back bend and soften your hands to the tummy here. And here, just take two breaths. So you feel the low back release and feel the softening of the inner thighs a bit and take another full breath in to rest. Yeah. Good, so when we work this lower part, you know, when we did yoga and we got into Mula Bandha, this is the same part of the body, but now we're focusing on its muscular composition rather than the interior so much. Nice, now I'd like you to roll over onto your right side and this time I'll have your ring handy. 
Now, Susie, if this is not, I'm going to show you what I'm thinking of. And if this, you sense, is not going to be good for your shoulder because we do have to use strength, I want you to let me know. Ultimately, what it's going to look like is we're going to have this strength here. The knees are going to be bent when we lift, and then we're going to lengthen into a general side plank. We're going to use the opposite arm, elbow to the sky, to press it down and lift the hips up. Press it down and lift the hips up. Do you think that's a go or not? <laughs> let's see. Okay, let's give it a try. Good. Now, what I like to do is keep the knees bent for a minute so that when we rise on up, we lift the hips first a little bit, and then when we lengthen the legs long, this tends to be a little more protected. Good. Now, let's just look first lift the hips up. Mm -hmm. and bring the ring in front of you. Make sure the elbow is bent. The elbow's a little bit to the sky. The ring might be a foot and a half, 18 inches away from you. Now let's just practice lowering the hips and lifting up. Nice, lower it down and lift it up. Now, if you wanna get the opposite hand involved, when you lower the hip and lift it up, press your ring down. Lower and press. Yeah, it's almost like a pump lower, Press, lower, press. So upper side, lower side, upper side, lower side. Opposite sides of the body. Press, lower, press, lower, press, lower. We're doing two more. Press, lower, press, lower. Stay low. We'll slip that ring out to the side. I'd like you to roll onto the tummy. Your choice, we're going to find a little bit of um, hamstring work. You can have the hands folded with your forehead resting down, or if you prefer, you can have your arms out to the side. I have a feeling that stacking your hands and resting your forehead down is better for you. The legs are long behind you. They're parallel. Bend your right heel in towards your buttock. Pulse that leg twice and lengthen it long. Opposite, pulse that left leg in and lengthen it long. If there's any cramping, let me know. Good, pulse, pulse, lengthen, pulse, pulse, lengthen. Now, as you do that, Susie, can get your low stomach off the ground. Hold the belly button in. Good, so you get a sense of ribs. You get a sense of that activation of the hips. Pulse it in and keep the core engaged. Pull it in so much they have your coccyx curve. Yeah, almost like a hollowed out belly and pulse, pulse. Let it go. You doing okay? Yeah, good. Pulse, pulse. Opposite leg, good. Like right now I really have to, uh, my, my uh, inclination is to really tense up in my shoulders. Oh, you know what? Can I recommend then that you come to gentle cactus arms Maybe not even cactus arms, but V arms. So almost, or, or maybe like a W. Think of a W with your upper body. Yeah, bend the elbows in a little bit. Try that, Susie. So the shoulders have a little more broadening. Yeah, good shift to the hips. Is that nicer? Um, yeah, I think so. I think good, so. okay. And when you, when you pull the low belly in, it's not to put the weight into the shoulders. Think more of your hamstrings. Yeah. And if you need to bring the elbows down a little bit more close to the waist, that might be nice. Good, just do two more. I'm getting a cramp in my foot, sorry. Oh, you are, yeah, I know. These, these are crampy. It's the, it's the legs, that configuration when it's disciplined, good. Let's let that go. Don't exacerbate the cramping. Good, 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 good. Now I just like you to roll over to the left side. We're gonna get that same motion on the left side with your ring. And if you wanna shift it, yeah, really good. If you wanna shift on the mat, that's totally fine. First, bend the knees a little bit, yeah. And then when we rise up, of course, be aware, we lift it up and then lengthen the legs long. Make sure you have strength on that lower arm, good. Now let's bring attention to the hips. 
The ring in its position, the elbows bend a little bit. Maybe this, yeah, good. Let's just three times lower the hip and lift it up. Good, lower the hip and lift it up. Nice, lower and lift it up. Good, and now if you want to get the arm and bone, lower up, push. Yeah, lower up, push. Yes, and what's happening, and I see it really pronounced here, you're doing it perfectly, is the head to hips lift even higher. And what's doing that is your right side waist, your right oblique, the whole right side of the core. And the left core, thank you very much, is working so hard just to lift. Yeah, super strong. If you can, do four more. If this is hard on the shoulder, stop. Yeah, it's okay. hard on the shoulder. It's hard. Okay, let's let it go. You got major, major good ones in. That's fantastic. Roll onto your back now. We've got this ring still, and we're going to use that ring again. Mm -hmm. And we roll it back. I'd just like you to bring the legs up. We're bringing the legs inside the ring again, and we're pressing it away. Good. With those hands, I'd like you to reach the arms up. So it's really just your, you know, kind of like a dead bug. <laughs> in fact, this is sometimes called the dead bug in Pilates, but you have the ring around you. Good. Now lift the head, neck, and shoulders up. Slowly lower the head, neck, and shoulders down. Keep the legs nice and neutral. Do it again. Lift your head, neck, and shoulders up. And then slowly lower down. Just keep that lower body neutral. Once more, lift the head, neck, and shoulders up. And slowly lower down, just waking up the upper body. Bring the hands underneath your butt. So you're going to lift the hips up and place the hands under the butt. You might have the hands in this configuration. So you've got a triangle shape so that the sacrum of the triangle shape is supported. The legs are neutral and you're neither pressing them out, they're just neutral. I'd like you to lower the legs down as low as you can, bend the knees in and shine them up to the sky. Lower them down, squeeze them in and shine them up to the sky. Good. Lower them down as much as you can, squeeze them and use the low stomach to lift them up to the sky. Yes, flex the feet for me. Mm -hmm. okay. Lower, yeah, that changes it. And then press the heels up. Good, you feel the difference? I'm sorry, what was your direction? Um, to flex the feet rather than point them. Mm -hmm. Now lower the heels down. You get a little stronger sense of the belly. Squeeze it in, you like a frog kind of. And then sit it straight up. Good, flex, good, lower it down. Far as you can with the back on the mat, bend it and then squeeze it up. Now we're gonna reverse that motion, okay? Bend the knees in, send those legs straight out. Oops, straight out toward the chair. Yeah, lift it up, harder, yes. Bend the knees in. Low tummy, use it to send that straight out, like you know, push something away. Lift it straight up. Good, bend the knees in. Lengthen straight out. Get the back on the mat here, or on the hands. Shh. Send them straight out. Yes, and lift it up. Just two more, bend them in. Nice, legs go straight out, straight out from the low stomach. Good, and lift it up, just one more. Bend it on the inhale. Exhale, push those heels straight out toward the chair. Nice, and inhale, reach it up, fantastic. One more thing with the ring. We're bringing that ring outside the legs now, or pardon me, the ring goes inside the legs now, so the legs are nice and free. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to bring the arms now, and I think you have space. I'll show you this on an angle. The arms go out to the side for support. You're trying to keep the shoulders down, 
And I'd like you to send the legs over to the right as far as you can, but keep the left shoulder down. Raise it back up. There's the side waist to work on the right side. Exhale, lower those legs down to the left, straight out, and reach it back up. Major, major work on the left side waist. Inhale, over to the right. Pause here for a moment. Gather and exhale, lift it straight up. Yeah, so the shoulders are weighted heavy. Go to the other side. Shoulders on the ground with the hip lifts off, right? Say that one more time. Shoulders on the ground, but the hip lifts off. Shoulders are on the ground. Yeah, you're trying to use the stability of the upper body. Shoulders are down and send the legs way over. So there's a sense the legs are going to kind of fall, which is great. Yeah. So use that right side waist lifted up. Sorry. That's okay. I'm using... I'm going directly straight to the side as much as possible. You got it. Yeah. And the legs are going to, you know, it's going to almost feel like resting until you go to lift it back up. <laughs> right? So bring them over to the side. There you go. All the way over, all the way over. Try to keep the shoulders down. Good. Yeah, let it go. Good. Now here we go. Left side waist. Activate it. Bring it straight up. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Wrong question. I know. Not exactly. Okay. Bring them over to the right. Not wonderful control. Here goes the right side waist. Use it. Bring them up to the sky. Yes. Wonderful. Excellent. Really contained. Go to the other side. Good breath work. Yeah, great focus. Amazing. Use that side waist. Suck it up and zip it up. Yes. Try to push the legs away a little bit toward the chair. Nice. Bring them over toward my voice, over toward me. Over to the, yeah, to the right. Good. So it almost feels like nice, nice release. Until, here we go. Left shoulder weighted, right side waist. Good, just do one more round. Lower it down, upper body's like, yeah, I gotcha. That's the anchor. Wonderful, here we go. Really strong, lift it up. Yes, it's your last one. And I love how you're pausing. Yeah, perfect, that's what we want. Bring them over. Yeah, I can tell you're listening to the waist. Excellent. And we bring it right back up. Last one. You got it. Yes, so good. Let's bend the knees. We're going to bring your hands now outside the ring. And we're going to get into that low belly motion. Mm -hmm. So you're lying down. i just like you to roll it up now. And we're going to find that motion using the low belly purely lift the feet up send them a little bit long and through the ring we're going to keep the spine rounded we've done enough on the upper abs and the whole abs we're going to send it through and under then through and under and i recommend fingertips i recommend getting that ring as far away from you as possible with your fingers and just soft under and through Nice, under and through. And make it now a tiny motion, like a little tiny pulse, just shh, shh, toes barely through. Shh. Yeah, I know it's a lot. I know. Just do two of those. Tap and under. Tap and under. Do two more. <laughs> I'm so mean. I hate it when the teachers do. Okay, good. Lengthen up long when you're ready. Yeah, good, good, good. Now I'd like us to stretch that. We're gonna put the feet inside the ring, but not anywhere near a handle, nor will the hands be any near a hand, anywhere near a handle, and then roll it down. Yeah, and just let the release of that ring 
We're just going to rock, rock it up a little bit. Yeah, and roll it down. This is for the spine. Rock it up. It's almost like being on a swing set. You have the same motion of the torso, how it feels on a swing. Yeah, and then roll it down. Good. Think of core on the swing. She's developing those abs <laughs> and lower it down. Actually, you and Owen are probably still pushing her at this point. And roll it down. We just do one more. Up we go. And then roll it down. Now let's come up. We'll push that ring away for a moment. And Susie, do you have your roller with you? Yep. Okay, excellent. Yeah, we're just going to get into that roller a little bit. And what we're doing here is we've done this in class before, and I think this is going to be fine on your um, shoulders because we're having the roller, it's going to travel essentially the length of the shin. And ultimately, we'll look like this. I recommend an all forearms, or pardon me, all palm situation. In the ring, when we squeeze it in, it even comes on top of the feet, and then we lengthen it out. We squeeze it in and lengthen it out and squeeze it in using the core, but we're also using the upper back. Nice. And we round the spine quite a lot, and we tuck the chin a little bit when we squeeze it in. Wonderful, that's it. And send it out, not very far though. Squeeze it in. Mm -hmm. Come to the tops of the feet. This time, come to the tops of the feet. Let it go just a little bit. That's a little, about eight inches too far. Squeeze it in. No, 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 you got it. No, you're perfect. You're perfect. We'll just squeeze it in, but go to the tops of the feet. Mm -hmm. And round and tuck the chin. Good. Just send it back six inches and do it again. Yes, yeah, six inches and do it again. That's it. Tuck the chin. Round the spine. There you go. Rocking motion, not too far back. If we send it too far back, we're going to arch our back. You got it. Good work. Yes, you're adjusting so nice. Squeeze in, exhale, inhale, exhale. Four more, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, last one. Good, good, good. Let the ring come above the knees now, or you know, just in the middle of the mat here. Mm -hmm. That's it, good. Now we're going to bring that ring a little bit forward. I'm going to show you this. This may or may not be good. It may be too much activation on your shoulders. And I want you, you've done this before, but I don't know if this is good for you now, okay? When we have the back long, we're looking down. The ring is close to, but not on the elbow. We inhale, we've anchored the low body. And when we squeeze it and we lift using the middle of the back. It's not a shoulder thing, but this may be too active on your shoulder and we lengthen it and then squeeze. I don't know if this is going to be therapeutic or uncomfortable. Um, let me know. Mm -hmm. Have the palms, have the palms face each other. I have is dark. I don't know how you're seeing anything. <laughs> oh, I'm seeing a little bit. Yeah, no, I can see a little bit. Yeah. Good, have the palms face each other. The key here is really push the tops of the feet down. Yeah, and push the pubic bone down so the knees are probably lifted, okay? Good, yeah, and think of the back doing the work. Now, when you lower it down, don't use your shoulders, use your upper back and lower, or, or mid back, and then lift it back up. That might be too far, lift it back up. Mm -hmm. Good. And now lower down again, not too far. Just go to the tip of the elbow, but look down. Yes, do it again. There it is. Keep the neck and head right where they are. Use that back. Shh. The back's the only thing that's working. So beautiful. Squeeze in back strength. Wonderful. I say the back is the only thing that's working. That's the only thing you're aware of that's working. 
The core is astonishing in its stability. Three, two, fantastic. Neck is perfect. One, excellent. Excellent. I'd just like you to send that roller away now. You can still have the, maybe the hands on the roller for the stretch. So the hands are dangling above the roller. And then just bring the heels toward the buttocks. We're going to separate it a little bit. And then windshield wiper back and forth. We're going to let those hips release. The shoulders are just resting. Yeah, moving side is in that resting sensation. Yeah, really nice. And then we'll slip the roller away. And we'll rise on up. Let's come up into the all fours position. And we're not here for long. I know the wrists have had, you know, a little bit of action today. And what I like to do, and Susie, this, I think a thread the needle stretch with reaching the arm up might be nice for your shoulder. But again, if it's anything but therapeutic, please stop, okay? And we're not going to release the right arm to the sky a moment very far, rather than look up, because that I worry about. Let's just reach the right arm out to the side instead. And then when you bend in the elbow, don't drag it, but rather reach it out as far as you can. And then lower down and adjust. Maybe drag it a little further. Nice. Now what I'd like you to do with that left hand is crawl it away a little bit and then crawl it up toward the door and the chair. Crawl it up a little bit over your head. Yeah, so try to bring it up toward the top left corner of that. your mat. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, beautiful. Come onto your fingertips of the left hand. Nice. Crawl it back a little bit more if your shoulder allows. Yeah. Good, good, good. Maybe if you can, if you want to, if it feels good, Roll a little bit more onto the right side of your head. Yeah, maybe almost toward the back of the right side. Yeah, so that it's a really nice stretch on the right shoulder in one direction. It's nice on the left shoulder in a different direction. Very good. Good, yeah, bring it back. Back to your all fours for a moment. Mm -hmm. Just even everything out. And then let's reach the left arm just straight out, not up, but just straight out. And good, bend the right elbow and drag it under you using the core. Yeah, good, and place it down. Perfect, and let's bring the right fingers out away from your face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then crawl it up. Yeah, and when you come onto the fingers, see what happens is the palm is down. It's a different thing for the shoulder. When you lift it up, something happens, but do what works. Beautiful. And now let those fingers go up toward that chair leg, past it, past it toward the door. And then if it feels nice, it might be nice to look up a little bit. Yeah. And really it's more emotion of for shoulders. Yeah, you want the neck to be comfortable. Good. Yeah. That looks wonderful. Okay, one more breath here. And then we'll walk those fingers back, kind of bring it out a lot. So you feel that shoulder kind of release and rotate out the other side, yeah. And then let's drag it in mm -hmm, for support. And we'll send the opposite arm out rather than up. Mm -hmm. Unwind, beautiful. Yeah, and then lower that down. Good, and then just lower the hips toward the heels. And rather than release, you know, how we do on the neck, I just like you to place the fingertips down. And we do not do head rolls. That actually is not great for the neck. I just like you to look down, press the fingertips down and look down. 
And I'd like you to think of the back of the shoulders and the back of the neck and tuck your chin any amount until you feel a gentle, gentle release, not a stretch. Just, just more the fingers anchored, a lengthening. Now look straight ahead. Keep pressing those fingers down and very gently look up. And it's really just, I want you to get a sense of the back of the head. We're not looking way up. That's a little too high. I'm sorry, I should have been clear. We're trying to keep the back of the head in perfect alignment with your butt. Yeah, good. And now just bring the chin in alignment. So you're looking straight ahead. Good, soften the shoulders a tiny amount. Yes. yes. Do you feel that? Uh, Just soften the shoulders a little bit. Nice. Now place your hands on your thighs. So you lose the support of the fingers. Yeah. So that's that stack we want. When you stand, when you're sitting like this anytime, you want to think of the back of the head almost pressing back. You know, because when you're sitting like this, the tendency can be to round the shoulders. If you think of the head as pressing back, it lifts the whole torso up. Yeah, so posture. Yeah, it's a really nice posture idea. That's not, is that similar to a chin tuck? Yeah, uh, well, this, this, um, the chin, if we tuck the chin, I mean like an eighth or a quarter of an inch, you feel that and now press the head back. Yeah. So it's almost like that. And it's so, I can actually.